According to Grayson and his resource, The Use of Antibiotics, cephalosporins were first discovered in 1948 in the fungus Cephalosporium acrimonium, isolated off a sea near a sewer outlet off the Sardinian coast. Crude filtrates were found to inhibit the growth of Staphylococcus aurelius. Cephalosporins all share a similar structure consisting of the base structure shown here. The base structure, named 7-aminocephalosporic acid, shares great structural similarity to the base structure of penicillin. The antibacterial activity of the base structure of the cephalosporins is limited. The creation of semi-synthetic derivatives that add side groups at both the R1 and R2 locations greatly enhances the antibacterial action of the cephalosporin. The cephalosporins work very similarly to penicillins and have an almost identical mechanism of action. Cephalosporins kill bacteria by interfering with the transpeptidation reaction and inhibiting the formation of the cell wall. Cephalosporins do this by binding to and inhibiting transpeptidase. Cephalosporins work best in rapidly proliferating bacteria. Furthermore, cephalosporins are bactericidal. Beta-lactamases are a big deal to cephalosporins because beta-lactamases break the beta-lactam ring, rendering the cephalosporin inactive. Shown here again is the base structure of the cephalosporin, and beta-lactamases act right at the bottom of the beta-lactam ring, breaking the bond between the carbon and nitrogen and opening up the ring. This structural change to the cephalosporin is what renders it inactive by preventing cephalosporin interaction with transpeptidase. Cephalosporins are more stable to many beta-lactamases that would degrade penicillins. Having said this, there are still strains of Klebsiella species and E. coli that express robust beta-lactamases that are still able to bind and hydrolyze cephalosporins. In addition to beta-lactamases, other mechanisms of bacterial resistance to cephalosporins include altering porins, altering the molecular structure of transpeptidase, and the upregulation of cephalosporin efflux pumps. Porins are the gateway for cephalosporins to access the cell wall in a gram-negative bacterium. You'll recall that gram-negative bacteria have an outer membrane that surrounds the peptidoglycan cell wall. In order for cephalosporins to penetrate a gram-negative bacterium, they must pass through porins located in the outer membrane. Some gram-negative bacteria are able to develop a resistance to cephalosporins by altering their porin channels and thus preventing cephalosporins from entering the cell to inhibit cell wall synthesis. The structure of transpeptidase is also an important factor in cephalosporins eliciting an effective inhibition of cell wall synthesis. Some bacteria are able to generate resistance to cephalosporins by altering cephalosporin binding to transpeptidase. This usually occurs due to point mutations that occur in the cephalosporin binding pocket. If a cephalosporin is unable to bind to transpeptidase, then the cephalosporin is unable to inhibit cell wall synthesis. The final method of resistance to cephalosporins is due to increased efflux of the cephalosporin itself. Some bacteria are able to upregulate efflux pumps that actively transport a cephalosporin out of the cell after it has entered. Normally, a cephalosporin is able to kill the bacteria. However, efflux of the cephalosporin decreases the intracellular concentration of the cephalosporin and decreases its effectiveness to inhibit cell wall synthesis. This leads to bacterial survival. Cephalosporins are more stable to beta-lactamases versus penicillins, and cephalosporins tend to have a broader spectrum of activity versus penicillins. Cephalosporins are grouped into generations that tend to have similar bacterial coverages. These individual spectrums of activity will be covered in the individual cephalosporin generation videos. A very generalized rule that applies to most cephalosporins is that the first generation cephalosporins have better gram-positive coverage, i.e. Staphylococcus aurelius, whereas third generation cephalosporins tend to have better gram-negative coverage, i.e. E. coli. Second generation cephalosporins fall in the middle and provide okay coverage for both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Hypersensitivity to the beta-lactam ring is the most common side effect to cephalosporin use. The most common manifestation of this hypersensitivity is a macular papular rash that develops several days after therapy. 
The rash is sometimes accompanied by eosinophilia or fever. Due to the structural similarity between the cephalosporins and the penicillins, a hypersensitivity reaction to a cephalosporin would likely have cross-reactivity with a penicillin. This is of major concern for patients who have a history of a severe allergy to penicillin because a similar life-threatening reaction may occur if the same patient is given a penicillin. Other adverse effects for the individual cephalosporin generations exist, and these individual generation adverse effects will be addressed in the individual generation videos. This concludes the video. Thanks for watching. Please direct any questions to me on Twitter at Sheehy underscore Ryan. I've also included my sources here. Thanks again.